Hey folks, it's Grimwit from NatEvil.com, and um, this is a Bee Man. I'm sad for Bee Man, so I got him this present. I'm hoping it'll help clear the stench of this. How do I put it? Freedom? Mmm, that smells good. But even if the illusion is almost perfect, it's only artificial flavors and chemical esters. An almost perfect illusion, but not real. Like with everything here in the asylum, it's only a half-hearted attempt to trick us into thinking that we're free. And now that no one is stopping us from leaving the asylum, it provides us with a welcome excuse to refuse to leave. Right you are, stranger. I'm just running away from my responsibilities. The responsibility to myself to accept the deal that the world out there has offered me. I thank you. I've made up my mind. I can't just sit around here doing nothing anymore. I should buzz across fields of flowers and collect honey. Toodaloo, asylum. Hey-ho, freedom. Oh, God. Whee! Lily was glad that she had helped the bee man. Soon he would be in a better place. A field of flowers. Wherever the man in the bee costume was now, he apparently didn't need a scarf. Oh, huh, it's time to grab it. Huh. It smells like lavender. I didn't expect that. There we go. All right. Uh, we need to grab this pizza. I think you all know why. And I think we have everything. We've got the half-hearted attempt at the... Uh, Harvey Bunny. We have ourselves a yellow scarf for this yellow urinal. What do you have there? Let me see. Oh, very good. You obviously understand the basic principle. Go ahead and use the yellow urinal as much as you like. This guy's voice reminds me of the retarded clay guy from uh, Neverhood. You guys ever played that? What do you have there? Let me see. Oh, very good. You uh, go ahead. There. All right. Red curtains, yellow scarves, blue Harveys, and green pillows. What do you have there? Let. Oh, uh, you uh, go ahead and. All right. Now you're probably asking, Grimwit, what the hell are you doing? And I would say, don't curse. This is a children's show. Well, as you may remember. We have a pizza. The uh, RPG group wanted blueberries, broccoli, tomatoes, and bananas, but of course they don't like that particular... they don't like anything, really. So here's what you have to do. You have to dye the fruit, but you can't dye the fruit in the urinal. You have to put them in cloth in the urinal. I don't know why. Now, there's a complicated system of uh, things here that we have to keep in mind, like they can only see certain colors, they mix certain colors up with other colors, and, and those colors that they can't see, obviously they would assume would be the colors of the items that they want to eat, but they get those mixed up, and you know, it's just one big headache. You could work this out, you could work it out with pencil and paper, paper but I'm just going to tell you what the answer is, okay? Yellow blueberries. How about that? Yellow blueberries. Green tomatoes. How about that? Green tomatoes. Blue broccoli. How about that? Blue broccoli. And red bananas. How about that? Red bananas. Now don't think about this too hard or blood will shoot right out your nose. Red bananas. Now you'll notice that their faces, like they don't care, doesn't care, doesn't care. Hey, he likes it. Well, if you had put a different one on, he wouldn't have liked it because somebody, somebody would have disliked it because they didn't like bananas or something. I don't know. Yellow blueberries. Anyway, it's, 
It's a good puzzle, but... Blue broccoli? It's really, just really, really annoying. And I don't even complain... I shouldn't complain too loud. Green tomatoes. Because this particular puzzle is kind of the last hard puzzles. After this, it really is smooth sailing. Kind of. Sort of. Oh, whatever. Let's just get this over with. Hey, folks, I got your bloody pizza. I stabbed a man in the eye today. Ah, oh, the pizza. Well, then. Mmm. Superb. Superb. Great! I wish I were as good on the phone as you. Druggle jug. And Peter is satisfied, too. Satisfied? How can I be satisfied in such a world in which the only moments worth living for are those when the pizza arrives with the right toppings? That means yes. We owe you one. Peter almost starved to death. It's not that bad. I've already lost all hope of dying honorably anyway. Juggle jug! Well said. Now that the food is taken care of, let us begin the game. Don't you want to play too, sweetie? Uh-huh. It'll be incredibly fun! If you take pleasure in such excessive self-degradation. That and a dice cup! Druggle jug! Uh-huh. So be it. Then follow us. Into the world of Hoth Montigore. Hang on, I gotta click this little thing. There. Lily found herself in a clearing. The campfire was crackling, and the wind whipped through her clothes. You can hear the war drums of the goblins in the distance. This is your last rest before the great battle. Lily did in fact hear drums. An enormous army seemed to be waiting for them in the nearby mountains. Wait, are you telling the story or am I? Uh, wh what? It's just that I see that you don't have the Dungeon Master screen in front of you. And I'm pretty sure that the Dungeon Master is recognized by his Dungeon Master screen. It's true. That's ridiculous. I'm the narrator. I don't need a... Well, then why don't you be the dungeon master then? I'm curious how you'll do without any battle value tables or source books. What? B but that's... That's what I thought. And now, move over. Ow! Hey! You can't just... Where was I? Oh, yes. You're here on the orders of the king to drive the goblins from the gore. There are rumors that the goblins have dammed up the Pink River. Pink? This has turned Hothmotagor's most important memorial into a reservoir. Is this a pink? The Valley of Unpleasant Memory. Because, because we know Pink. Also sitting at the fire is a mysterious local guide. You're tired from the journey, but sleep is far from your mind. Goblin scouts! could be lurking anywhere. The black magician Petrula, the noble Sir Drogolot, and the amusing juggler Snippo. I want a different role. <laughs> Are gathering their strength for the battle. Only the Amazonian barbarian warrioress Lilligrim. Huh? That's you! Only the Amazonian barbarian warrior Lilligrim is restless. It's your move. Lilligrim, what will you do? Okay, well, first we gotta talk to this mysterious NPC. The hooded figure sat silently at the campfire. Strange. I can't remember him being in the adventure. Which source book does he come from? Uh, the Carrion Crown Pass. I believe it's the, uh... You know, I'm, I should just shut up. I do want to run that campaign eventually, if I can find any players. Petrula sat by the fire and watched the tea kettle. Briefly describe yourself. Well, I'm like a totally powerful wizard. Totally. And pretty, but also totally powerful. And I'm wearing a robe embroidered with gold. A 
And it's totally pretty, you know? Underneath the hood, I look like totally gothic, but pretty. Thanks, Petra. That's enough. <laughs> Agreed. What about Sir Drugalock? Sir Drugalot looked splendid in his shiny armor. Druggle jug. Mithril armor? Really? Druggle jug. Okay, then. In his mithril armor. That means it's super light and powerful, kind of like carbon fiber. Roll for charisma, Peter. Do I have to? <sighs> that was to be expected. Snippo is just about the ugliest dope you've ever seen. <sighs> Alright, let's talk to this guy. I think you've probably guessed who he is. <gasps> My goodness, who do we have here then? A little barbarian warrioress. Uh huh. I sense great anger in you. Could it be that the thirst for battle sits in this little chest? Uh huh. Then let me give you some advice. Swallow it. The most successful battle is the one that doesn't even have to be fought. So what? be a what? good little barbarian warrioress and take a nap. Lilligrim could hardly believe her ears. Wasn't this a fantasy role-playing game? What fun was there in imagining aimlessly sitting around a campfire? Lilligrim didn't dream of listening to the soothing advice of the mysterious NPC. If anything, it just made her angrier. Too bad that she had to stop herself from losing control. She would have loved to have screamed this dope's head off. Yeah, I think uh, you've kind of guessed that our next restriction is about to get tossed off or something. Hey, Petrula. Um, don't startle me like that. Can't you see I'm watching the kettle? Oh, okay. Are you, are you ready for the fat? We should attack now. Um, the goblins are keeping quiet. Maybe too quiet. Goblins? What could the goblins be planning? Why did they submerge one of the kingdom's greatest memorials underwater? Something similar happened to me once, but that was an accident. But I don't really think that the Royal Loo can be considered a memorial. I don't even want to know. What's up with this kettle? Um, if you're wondering what I'm doing here, I'm brewing a diabolical magic potion, of course. <clears throat> well, <laughs> it's actually a calming tea. I really wanted to conjure some coffee demons, but they don't let you get any sleep. And we do need our strength for the battle. Now I have to watch the kettle before it starts to whistle. The Traveler has such sensitive ears. <laughs> I, uh, why are... Wait, I'll watch the kettle. Um, don't you want to sleep? No. Uh-uh. I wonder why. Because I'm really exhausted. You mean oh, totally? if you're staying up anyway, do you think you could watch the kettle? Sure, I'll watch the kettle. Uh-huh. Oh, great! Then I can finally get some sleep. As you know, we need our strength for... Oh, oh, oh don't oh, do no. that. Oh, oh. 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 God. I still have some insomnia. It's hard It's hard to think straight. Anyway, hey, what's up, Sir Dragalot? Um... Hello, Lilligrim. You're still up? You Dragalot? should get some rest. I'll keep guard, and make sure the fire doesn't go out. <laughs> Don't look so grim. Your thirst for action is honorable, but the mysterious traveler is right. Strength lies in tranquility. Lilligrim felt like screaming at the brave Sir Drogalot. She hadn't traveled all the way to Goblin Gorge just to sleep, but something kept her from losing her temper. Fuming, she turned away from her companion. Her eyes fell on the quiet traveler who had listened to the entire conversation. Was that a smile she saw beneath the hood? Oh, I am still a little tired. Sleep! 
Yeah. Are you as tired as I am? Oh yeah. Uh, what's up with the goblins? Don't worry. I'm sure the goblins won't attack us tonight. They're guarding their reservoir dam in the gorge. But I do wonder what their plans are. Damming up the Pink River and flooding the Valley of Unpleasant Memories. Why? It's all very mysterious. I'll just tell you that I didn't see it coming, but you probably do. We should attack now. The... Um... I know what you want to say. You're here to fight. Not to sleep, right? Maybe tonight we should. Remain calm and gather our strength. That's what you wanted to say, right? <sighs> the Traveler is right. Acting in haste is never a good idea. <gasps> yeah, well, well, what about... You know what? I'll watch the fire. Where's the firewood? Um, are you worried about the fire? Hmm. Usually... I'd agree with you. Those few logs are certainly not enough to keep the fire burning through the night. Plus, the best things always happen to you when you go into the forest looking for firewood. You find treasure maps, fall into enchanted wells, or meet merchants with magical amulets. Maybe I should... Relax a little and call it a day. That's what you wanted to say, right? Hmm. The Traveler is right. There doesn't always have to be an adventure, and the night is pretty warm. I'll wait up to put the last log on the fire. Then I'll turn in, too. I just realized we're fighting pot. Get out of here. I'm tired of looking at your face, but I will take that firewood. You don't need to roll to figure that out. They're logs. Oh. I need those for my game of Don't Starve. Not that uh, you guys... Well, I'm probably not going to do a Let's Play of Don't Starve. It's pretty long. Uh, drug... <sighs> See ya, Druggle Jug. Snippo, what's up, my man? Um, hello, Lily Grim. Would you like to be amused by my funny pranks? Yes. Then watch me. And, are you amused? Uh-uh. What is... We should attack now. I didn't think I'd ever say such a thing, but I'd wish we'd go into battle instead of just hanging around here. I'd much prefer a quick, bloody death to this endless humiliation. <laughs> I like you, Snippo. Let's go attack some goblins. Cool. I'm not afraid of the goblins, if that's what you mean. I'm not worried about being cut into little pieces by mighty goblin swords. And I'm not bothered by the rumors that they wrap the intestines of their victims around thorny spears. Cool. For I am Snippo, the funny prankster of the group. <laughs> Sleep! <sighs> Those are words after my own heart. Somehow I guessed that this would be even less entertaining for me than Malefice. I knew it, but no! Ahem! <clears throat> Right. It seems that excitement in this exciting world is not wanted. You need to juggle. Can you do more than one oh. ball? Yes. It doesn't just look like it. I am actually juggling only one ball. And I know how ridiculous that must seem. My character sheet said that I... <clears throat> I, the comical snippo have the marvelous ability to juggle 55 balls at once. Awesome. But as much as I would have liked to imagine what such a thing would look like, the mysterious traveler thought I should just juggle one ball instead, because it's much more contemplative. Huh? And as long as my shame or boredom doesn't cause me to spontaneously combust, then I'll stick to that. If you have a better suggestion... Uh, what about 55 balls? <laughs> I understand. You want to see the trick with the 55 balls? Yeah. I have to disappoint you. The Traveler thinks it's too hectic. Uh. And apparently this game is about fulfilling the obscure wishes of randomly appearing cowl wearers. <sighs> At least this game is sticking to the book. Look, the time is not 420. What about just three balls? <laughs> hmm. Maybe I'd feel a little less stupid if I try it with three balls for a while. <clears throat> On the other hand, I'm a clown called Snippo, 
and I have a penchant for ridiculous hats. It's probably part of the role that I feel like a moron. I wonder what job he uh, got his pension from. You know what? All right. What about no balls? <laughs> you think I should try it without any balls? Bravo. You found the only way to increase my boredom even more. On the other hand, if I juggle without a ball, I might be able to take a quick nap. No one seems to object to sleeping around here. I'm just gonna take that ball. It's a normal sized juggling ball. That's all I can say about it. I don't have my compendium of juggling balls with me. You better believe there is one. Alright. The campfire crackled atmospherically. Where is. Too bad. I especially burned a CD of campfire sound effects. I must have left them in the fire. Just imagine the crackling. You know, if you had an MP3 player, this wouldn't be a problem. I suspect... Good! The ball was stuck, but the pressure in the cauldron still wasn't enough for something to happen. All right. Add some wood to this fire. Okay. Will no one do anything? So drug a lot. Druggle jug. In character, please. Drug. <sighs> Not yet, Lily Grim. The fire should last the whole night. Okay, we have to figure out a way to get Druggle jug to go fall ahead asleep. and lie down. I'll make sure that the fire doesn't go out. Um. You, you should sleep, dude. Hey, that was an actual yawn. Are you as tired as I am? Not a guan. Or whatever it was. Okay, repeatedly yawning may not actually... Oh. Never mind. Well... Now let's wake everybody up. You try putting the logs on the fire. Roll for sneak and hide so Sadrugalot doesn't wake up. Done! The logs were in the fire. The child, what are you doing? Making this things exciting. This noise can't possibly be good for the group harmony. Without wanting to rush you, Maybe now is the time for controlled, well-considered action. If you proceed with the required calm, I'm sure you'll be able to defuse the situation before there's a disaster. Uh-uh. I really must insist you stop making that sound. Can't nah. you see that you're threatening to destroy the idyllic calm? Uh-huh. Cool. But that's to arms! They've declared war on us! Sound the horn! I figured it would sound like an owl. That sound. I have to keep calm. No. Enough. I can't take it anymore. This noise is driving me crazy. I'm losing control. Two arms. Huh. Finally, the fun part of the role-playing game began. The group stormed the battlefield with no restraint. They were led by Lily Green who furiously swung her berserker sword in circles. Oh, they are potatoes. And as the dice rolled in the institution, so did the heads of goblins in Hoth Modigor. It seems it is a good idea to occasionally vent your rage. It was a short battle. The goblins were powerless against the fury unleashed by the group. The plans of the Goblin King were thwarted.
Lilligrim found the defeated monarch cowering beneath one of the support beams of the dam. Lily, poor foolish Lily, that was a terrible mistake. Lilligrim was still wondering what he meant. Yeah, whatever. When she heard an ominous crack above her. Glub, glub, glub. So, pink. Just, just so you know. When the pink floods had subsided, our heroes were faced with an incredible sight. The Valley of Unpleasant Memories. Will you look at that? I have to admit, I'm really blown away. We shouldn't be here. Ha! <laughs> You've always been quite the comedian, Snippo. No, I mean it. This valley is cursed. I heard that. Wait a second. Lily? What's wrong with her? sure you can imagine how she felt at that moment. You can't? Oh well. Who knows what really goes on in the mind of a little girl. The shadow? <coughs> you feel all right, little girl? <coughs> little girl? Hello? Mm, uh, are you okay? I was worried, you know? Am I crazy, or did it just get colder in here? <sighs> We've got some things to do. <laughs> <laughs> 